Top 10 Misconceptions About American Slavery It's almost Black History Month, so it's an ideal opportunity to discuss the characterizing thing in American dark history, subjugation. It's not by and large a light theme, which may be the reason there are such countless confusions about who possessed slaves, where slaves came from, the number of there were, and how they lived. In any case, there is much more assortment to the peculiar institution than your set of experiences educator has instructed you. 10 Interesting Facts You Never Knew About Slavery Number 10 All Southerners Own Slaves Truth Be Told, Most of Southerners Didn't Possess Slaves Despite the fact that insights differ from one state to another, the 1860 registration records Mississippi and South Carolina as the most elevated slaveholding states. At 49% and 46% of the European populace claiming them. 1. However, th the subjugation was fully coordinated into the forced construction of the South. In Texas, servitude was just lawful for a very long time, 1845 to 1865. However, by 1860, 27% of Texans claimed an aggregate of 182,566 slaves. That 27% stood firm on 68% of government situations and 73% of the state's abundance. In that brief time frame, servitude figured out how to get basic to the state's decision elite. 2. Because claiming slaves was compared with abundance and political force, numerous European families sought to arrive at that level. They were a superficial point of interest. Like the BMWs and Birkensacks of today, pine for by many, possessed by a couple. Number 9 Slaves came from everywhere Africa European slave brokers were financial specialists. They needed the most about of item for minimal measure of exertion. They had next to no intrigue in gallivanting around a whole landmass when they had the alternative to remain generally stationary, at the tallness of the slave exchange. One out of six slaves came from Senegambia, the region between the Senegal and Gambian rivers. Today, it comprises of Senegal, Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, and Mali. About a fourth of all slaves shipped off the United States came from this space. Another quarter came from West, Focal Africa, the space of the cutting-edge countries of Angola, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Gabon. Despite the fact that they communicated in various dialects, they shared a great deal for all intents and purpose as far as culture, customs, and religion. An impressive number of slaves additionally came from the slave coast, where a considerable lot of the boats would be secure. On the off chance that the boats actually had space, the dealers would direct waterfront strikes to fill them. Today, it makes up the shoreline of Ghana. Number 8 All enslaved Africans came to the United States It is assessed that 10.6 million Africans were persuasively stuffed onto sends and cruised across the Middle Passage all through the 1600s, 1700s, and 1800s. Around 388,000 advanced toward the United States or what might turn into the United States. About 3.6% of the total, 4, this is microscopic contrasted with the quantity of slaves that were transported to South America and the Caribbean, imagined. About 4.8 million individuals were sent to Brazil to work the country's gold mines and sugar ranches, about 40% of all Africans brought across the Middle Passage. Another 1.2 million were shipped off Jamaica. Five historians gauge that around 60,000 to 70,000 slaves advanced toward the United States from the Caribbean, making the complete number of Africans to around 450,000. This implies that practically the entirety of the 42 million African Americans alive today are plummeted from not exactly a large portion of 1 million African individuals. Number 7 Subjugation was only in the South. In 1776, subjugation was legitimate in all of the first 13 states. Slave work was basic in building the city of Boston, and the Merchant's Coffee House in New York City held sales on a week-after-week -week plan. Slaves chipped away at the docks, in homes, and on farms, although the entirety of the northern states had passed laws prohibiting subjugation by 1804, the laws didn't in a flash free the entirety of the slaves in the state. 
While trying to stay away from contention, the laws regularly annulled subjection step by step. In New York, the Gradual Emancipation Act liberated oppressed youngsters brought into the world after July 4, 1799. Yet, since it is flighty to turn free countless kids with no management, they were viewed as contracted workers until they arrived at adulthood. This is the way New Jersey, the, the last northern state to ban bondage in 1804, still had 18 slaves in 1860. They were legitimately considered disciples forever. Number 6. Subjection was only in rural areas albeit most of American slaves worked in farming, particularly cotton, tobacco, and rice. About 10% lived and worked in metropolitan zones. They worked in an assortment of gifted positions from dock workers and firemen to coopers and metal forgers. Now and again, manor slaves were allowed to move to the city and bring in cash during moderate seasons. 8. The larger part of slaves in the city were ladies performing homegrown undertakings in European families. Rich families claimed a group of ladies who cleaned the home, cooked for the family, and did the clothing. Indeed. Even working-class families could bear the cost of one to assist with everyday errands. A portion of these ladies were permitted to live external the city with different Africans. Both slave and free industries like the lumber business or the block business would purchase captives to balance work costs. Railways utilized this strategy too. There were likewise city slaves claimed and worked by regional authorities. Similarly there was public waterworks and septic frameworks. The city of Savannah, Georgia claimed various captives to look after streets, fabricate city constructions, and clean metropolitan structures. It's even conceivable they worked part of the neighborhood prison. Number 5. Slaves didn't have free time contingent upon their circumstance. Slaves got shifting measures of extra energy. On the rice ranches of South Carolina and Georgia, each slave was given a day-by-day -day task and when that was done, they had the option to spend the remainder of the day how they picked. On cotton and tobacco ranches, slaves were left to their own gadgets after nightfall. A few proprietors offered Saturdays or Sundays rest. Ten slaves would likewise praise occasions, particularly the period among Christmas and New Year. Work was suspended and everybody appreciated music moving, athletic rivalries, and drinking bourbon. It was likewise a mainstream time for weddings, as the suspension of work considered a conventional function and festivity. A few proprietors would offer presents, going from the yearly portion of dress to modest quantities of money. Number 4. Slaves couldn't earn money like every other person throughout the entire existence of the world. Slaves had a need to bring in cash, especially the rare sorts of people who had the option to purchase their own freedom. Some proprietors had a framework in which the slaves could accomplish additional work called exhaust for cash. It very well may be accomplished for their proprietor or for other European individuals locally. This was particularly normal if the slave was exceptionally gifted at a specific art, for example. Blacksmithing or coopering, growing little gardens were additionally mainstream, as the families could either sell the vegetables or eat them themselves. As they turned out to be more fruitful, they would have the option to buy creatures like pigs and chickens. Others would make straw brushes or bins to sell at market, alongside other hand-tailored items with their cash. Slaves purchased food, cooking devices, garments, toiletries, and extravagance things like liquor and tobacco. In addition to the fact that this prevented slave proprietors from giving these things themselves, yet it gave the slaves a modest quantity of individual flexibility. A few proprietors contended that this feeling of possession was important to forestall resistance. Number 3. Slaves couldn't re Slave proprietors were anxious about slaves figuring out how to peruse. All things considered, proficiency had been essential for the achievement of Hades' slave unrest, and abolitionist writing was just getting more well known. Therefore, numerous southern states made it unlawful to instruct captives to peruse. This makes the United States the solitary country on the planet to boycott schooling for slaves. 13. However, Numerous individuals were against the boycott. 
toward one side, against government slave proprietors were irate that state governments attempted to control how they could and couldn't manage their property. Other slave proprietors required their captives to perform secretarial errands, for example, letter composing and documenting, to which perusing is fundamental. Baptist chapels likewise resisted the law, since it is integral to their religion that congregation individuals have the option to peruse the Bible. Number two, all slaves were Christian during the 1600s and 1700s. It was considered unscrupulous for a Christian to claim another Christian. In this way, slave proprietors deterred their slaves from changing over as well as gave a valiant effort to conceal their ethical difficulty. They stressed that this would support cancellation developments. Along these lines they saw the profound existences of their property with absolute lack of engagement, giving them free reign to rehearse any religion they wanted. 51. In the 1800s, there was an influx of Christian enthusiasm known as the Second Great Awakening. Methodist and Baptist places of worship started contacting subjugated individuals who changed over by the thousand. Unfit to forestall the spread of Christianity, slave proprietors rather recruited ministers to give messages accentuating entries from the New Testament. Particularly those that express slaves ought to acknowledge their relegated status and their understanding and confidence will be remunerated in paradise. Number 1. Slaves lost connection with their African roots The experience of intersection The middle passage, being sold at closeout and being constrained into subjection was clearly horrible for the normal African. To manage the injury, slaves went to their West African customs and revamped them for American life. Seventeen family is vital in West Africa. The custom of regarding grandparents by giving their names to the cutting edge was preceded, as was regard for older folks. At the point when organic families weren't free, Others locally assumed the obligations of being aunties and uncles. These embraced family lines kept accounts of life in Africa alive. Large manners may likewise have a magician, an individual who rehearsed West African otherworldly customs. For an expense, they could possibly fix an ailment, exile a problematic soul, or revile your foe, who, justifiably, may be your proprietor. The less ages a seer had returning to Africa, the more strong their force was accepted to be.